Hi everyone. If we use Miraband's rule of communication as a guide, we know we have the potential to be really effective when it comes to selling and presenting online. Video conference software, you know, like Zoom or Teams, allow us to deliver all the elements that we normally need to be effectively communicate and get our message across. You know, like tonality, voice inflection, accents, speech pattern, body language, and facial expressions. Now, it'll never be equal to presenting or selling in real life. However, with the right techniques and gear, you can certainly get it close. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some hints and tips that are going to help you level up your presenting online. So let's start with sound. Now, according to Miraband's rule of communication, 38% of our effectiveness to communicate with others comes from the tone of our voice. So based on this, we want to make sure that we're able to deliver the best sound quality possible. The only problem is most of us rely on the built-in microphones that come within our PCs or laptops. And they sound like this. And as you can hear, much of our tonality and voice inflection is lost because the cheap built-in microphones make our voices sound kind of tinny and harsh. So the best solution is to invest in a better microphone. So I have some good examples here for you that can really help. So the first one you might consider is something like this, these USB headsets. And they might be a bit call centry looking, but they're really effective they are. And reason for that is, is one is the microphone drops down and it's right near your voice. The other thing is, is of course you got your headphones on. So if you work in a noisy environment on there, you can really hear the person on the other end. And they're also pretty bulletproof because they're USB powered. Once you plug them in, you don't have to worry about recharging them. So they work really well all day long. So another one to consider is something like this, which is a Bluetooth earbuds. And these are very popular. Most people have a pair of them lying around. And some of them have decent built-in microphones. And you know, they work very, very well. The only thing I don't like about these is that you have to recharge them very often. So if your job is you're making lots of video calls, you're gonna find yourself having to recharge the battery throughout the day. Or you could use something more elaborate, like a shotgun mic. And that's something that I'm using here. But the problem with the shotgun mics, they're expensive to use because you have to buy the mic and then you need to buy an audio interface as well. But something else I definitely recommend is something like this. And this is a USB lavalier microphone. And this works extremely well. So all you do is you clip it on here, but the other end is a USB and it goes straight into your laptop and gets picked up. And I gotta say, bang for the buck, this is absolutely phenomenal. It's giving you great sound and absolutely perfect when you're talking about video calls on there. And something like this, maybe like a ceremonic version, you're talking about maybe 50, 55 euros for something like this. Definitely well worth the purchase it is. Now, in addition to being able to deliver great sound, what video conference software allows us to do is project good, positive body language which according to Mirabans rule of communication, contributes towards 50 bar percent of how well we communicate with others. So what exactly is good positive body language? Well, this of course be smiling, nodding, you know, keeping your arms open, having a no weapons hand gesture. However, one of the most important ones, making and maintaining eye contact is where most of us fail. And that's because of the positioning of our camera. And also our innate sort of tendency to try and make eye contact with the person on the screen, rather than looking through the lens of the camera. Now, the great way to resolve this basically is to position your laptop so it's nice and high and you're staring straight at it. And what's also great about doing it that way as well is that if you have a tendency that you feel you want to look down from the camera lens and look at the person on the screen, then that kind of change in distance between looking at the lens and looking at the person's screen is only small and you're still going to come across as looking the person in their eye and maintaining make, making that eye contact. Now, just like your built-in microphone, your laptop's built-in camera is normally very poor as well. And because body language is clearly a visual cue, we need to ensure that we're sending the best video signal possible. So a way to do this is through better lighting. So what you could do is position yourself in front of a window and use basically the natural light coming in in order to then help the lens of the camera pick you up and give you a better video signal. Or if that's not possible, maybe you should think about investing in some lighting. Now you can pick up nice, some nice sort of softbox lighting for 50 or 60 euros and they really do the trick as well. Now the thing you might want to consider is using a better camera. Because if you're using the built-in camera inside your computer, as I said earlier on, it's not very good. So some better ones out there is something like this. And this is kind of like the workhorse of this, which is the Logitech C920. Most streamers, for example, and YouTubers use a version of this here. And they run normally about 60 euros, but they're absolutely phenomenal. You know, they use a HD signal. And in addition to that, they're just plug and play. Now, another thing to consider is most people have some sort of nice phone inside their pocket, which normally has a very good camera. And there's software out there called Epox Cam, and it's €8.99, and it allows you to change your phone into webcam. And i got to say, the picture is absolutely phenomenal, this. The only downside is you can't receive any calls. So another thing you might want to consider is just making your background a little more visually appealing. I think we've all been there, you know, some people have like a messy background, and some and then your eye is more drawn to that rather than the person who's doing the talking or something very sort of bland. So you could obviously, you know, improve your background. And ways to do that is you can invest a little bit of money in some LED strip lights that really helps as well. 
Or we might consider maybe using the virtual backdrop that you have feature that you have in Zoom, for example. Now, the only thing I don't like about the virtual backdrop is that if you move around suddenly, you can really see that it's fake, but it is what it is. It certainly works better than having a messy background on there. But what you could do is spend a little bit of money, invest some money on a green screen, and this will give you a very professional look because you can integrate that into Zoom. And if you do move around a bit, it basically does a really good job and it doesn't show that kind of blur. And then you can introduce maybe using sort of like a, you know, pictures or images that have that bokeh effect. You know, that one's pictures that you can use where the background is blurred and that helps to keep you then in the foreground in focus and that works very well as well. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the video. And as I always say, if you like the content I'm putting out there, you know, please go ahead, you know, click the follow, give me a like and as always, good selling.